have Jennifer Kujo as our first female football player on Tele Talk Show tonight. Welcome, Jennifer Kujo. Thank you for having me today. Thank you, thank you. So, if I may ask, who is Jennifer Kujo, please? Um, a female soccer player, um, a sister, I think a friend, and a young girl that loves the game so much from Africa, and she's just been following it. So, basically, I'm just a young female athlete who is, you know, enjoying um, every aspect of soccer and how life, you know, is going and everything. Yeah, pretty much that's it. <laughs> that's interesting that's interesting so tell us uh where in ghana did you grow up um i grew up basically in takrade which is western Russian side um if uh, everybody knows it's a place that the same as Nima and and it's just an uh, environment where um soccer is part of the community and so um i enjoy every moment that i I live there um, in different cities, but uh, that's where I grow up in West side of Ghana. Yeah. That's nice. That's nice. I don't think I've uh, been to Takradi before. Yeah. I, I heard it's actually a nice place to be or to visit or to go on holiday. So, yeah. You know, maybe one day I might check out there. So tell us, how did you get into football and how was the reaction of your parents when they found out that you were playing football? Um, I remember when I was three, because normally I used to play with my sister. My sister was a little older. So I started a game just because watching my sister playing. When he, she was like eight, ten years old, the only younger player playing with the older teams in Takrati and I I always watch her. so she basically you know come in the last 20 minutes and she would dribble and the whole fans would scream so I was watching it and I was like this is what I want to do I want to be able to play and then I'll be able to just do the same thing so my sister I, and also I would say uh, with my family my mom and my dad are a player you know they played soccer in high school and college um, my mom basically was, and she loves the game, knows everything about the game. She was okay for in soccer and whatever we want to do. But with my dad, even though he loves us playing, but also he was 100% into it, you know, with why a woman would play soccer. So pretty much sometimes he, he would take our cleats and be like, you don't have to go to training, you know, but. As time goes on, when we started, you know, getting into that team, he he started changing, and he was like, "Oh yeah, you can now play soccer." But growing up, my mom was the biggest, you know, person that she always, you know, give us a money to go to training, like take a cup or just to be able to go to training. But so my mom was a big fan of soccer. But yeah. Oh okay. So your sister was actually. A uh, football player. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess she paved the way for you to play football or to decide you want to be a football player as well. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> she. <laughs> so was your daddy, your daddy was not in support of it, or what? Um, I think I would say he just didn't know how that could be a career for a young person. And also, you know, I think it's family thing. It's just like women don't have to play. And so he wasn't, he actually played. So it was surprising. He wouldn't want us to spend so much time training and all of that. But I think my mom makes sure that he knows that she's always there to support. So as time goes on, he actually was able to just follow the path that my mom was creating for us. Yeah. At the beginning, he wasn't like, oh, it, so. 
Nice, nice, interesting. So tell us, as a female football player in Ghana, how did people receive you in your community? And uh, did you ever play in a mix of guys? Oh, yeah, um, I think pretty much that's what I did. Um, in my city, like where I grow up, Takrade, uh, we we only have one female team, which is the older team. You have twenty year, twenty five year old players. So when you're younger, you don't get to have any youth soccer or private. For me and my sister, we actually play with the boys. Nizasi Four was one of the guys that I played against. Oh, okay. This community like that every Christmas we play, there's money on it. So we would join one of the communities where we live in, and then me and my sister would be the only players in it. And then every time Asi Four would be defending, you know, me and my sister, and we just make fun of us. So we play with boys a lot every time after school. So, you know, in high school, we had a soccer team, but it wasn't, like, competitive. Girls wanted to just play, but there was still some girls that they want to play, but have to kind of join the older team. Too. So I played with a lot, pretty much. And when I was, I think, 13, I joined the Azakas ladies, which is where they played. And I was still younger, so I was, like, I would come in and train with them play any f games because I'm not like old enough or registered to play any games until I'm like old enough for them to sign me or register me for games. That's what I did pretty much. Wow. Wow. That's, that's pretty nice. Like did the guys ever kick, kicked you or did they beat you up when you're trying to like go past Just, the window? Oh, it's always like because they're not easy on you. They don't want a female to dribble them, but the boys will tease them, you know how in Ghana. So every time the boys will be like, no. And I remember Asifo will always, I'm going to defend Jennifer. Like, there's no, you know. So I grew up in the same area with him. So I know those guys. And it's always challenging when every time I pl I'm playing with the boys, I'm like, I have to go hard, you know, where I get all my, those energy, making sure that I'm not going to go easy on them. But even though it was, intense but also it made me realize that that's how the game is gonna be if you want to play you have to make sure that you go through everything so it was fun but crazy. someone just said yes i did i myself did that once marcos is claiming he kicked you before wow wow <laughs> that. wow that's nice 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 you mentioned uh azakes ladies was it in the Premier League, or was it in the academy side? No, um, it was in the Premier League. Like, even though Azakes ladies, the whole Azakes team, they used to have youth teams, but it was for boys. We have youth, 12 boys, 15 boys, 17, which is where our coach and all these boys were playing. But then we had only one female team. So even the younger players that would come in would be like, oh, we call ourselves academy, but we're not in academy. So... We basically we train with the older groups. And Wednesday, Thursdays, we have like a big game with the youngest and the oldest. And that's how we, we were with them until like maybe three, four years. And then they will actually train you. And then now, even though you're still young, you get like 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I, we never play um, like a youth league or U15 league. There was not that. There was this coach called Robert who created this um this leg even though it was still like probably like U fifteen but they all the older girls like twenty they were all play because they look younger now. Because that's all they can get every young girls to participate. It was like Christmas and then he would do their games but there was never like a leg that was under fifteen, under seventeen and then there wasn't like not like that. Wow, wow. Um as a female footballer in Ghana, what was the difficulties or the challenges you faced? Um, I, so for me personally, because maybe I played Azakes was different than other clubs. Uh, our team manager was so nice because he, he makes sure that 
he will bring a lot of soccer training where some play training gear they don't have cleats i personally i'll go home and my dad will take my cleats then i'll come back and they will give me cleats you know i think the most challenging thing for me was um when i don't get to travel with the older team it would it you know then i'm like sitting home and I, i i don't do you know i don't have the same access thinking that i've been trained i want to go to the national at that young age i don't get to play to develop or for the coach see me so that was the most hard thing you always looking to the selection even though when you're younger team and then you go and cuz you younger it's like you cannot make the team so it was hard to watch that for years until you actually would be able to come in and also i was saying financial you know mm-hmm. um in in ghana it's different <laughs> you know europe is like pay and play, play even though in ghana you don't get to pay to play but it was still hard for players to get transportation to training you know if your parents don't give you money then you have to use your own you know lunch or breakfast money to get to training and it was hard um but it got to a point where our team started giving us like call it like lorry fare so yeah. after training they would give you like 20 seat or 10 seat just for lorry fare and what do you have to do to manage it so next the next day you can go to try for some of the money they gave you so those are the two hardest things pretty much, pretty much that's what I so growing at that time I didn't I didn't have I wish I had some Ghanaian players like we you know we have our endo players but we didn't have those players that we can look up to and be like oh we wanted to be that player you know what i mean those players that inspire us until maybe the last 10 years then get to know adi bayo uh, like uh, adjo bayo and all, all these players but that's also one of the biggest challenges for me but in in all, i think i took whatever my offered me my especially my sister because she was also a player one of the best players in ghana okay look at her because she she it doesn't matter like she had her own training she she was doing everything by herself to become you know one of the best so look up to her and even if i don't have what i wanted it's like i'll look at her and she's like if she's okay i'm okay too yeah that's how i went through in ghana for it wow wow mm-hmm. i guess um you did learn a lot in ghana and um playing the mix of guys also made you like uh tough mm-hmm. like it it got you to actually work very hard as well yeah now you are in the USA playing mm-hmm. right how did you get the opportunity to, to football education or just like you said your sister used to play football did she help you to go out there yeah um so my sister actually came to college here she was playing and a guy found her so she was she came uh, two years before so i've always wanted to come here to and so uh come. so when my sister got the opportunity i was always on her hey when are you going to get break and play and go to school uh i was playing at the world cup you to me in japan and she told her coach which was university so it's like hey my sister is playing at the world cup. so the coach watched me he was like yeah this is good we want to have your sister and that's how everything the process comes so help me get everything and uh i sent all my documents into ca and all of it was a long post and I didn't go to division that I was supposed to go junior college for two years so I can so after that I took a year to in and I started a process and I came to Oklahoma spent um a year and I transferred to the coaches for one year and then I transferred to another school in Maine University of Maine for another year to finish um school over there that's how I get to come to America and then I'm here playing professional. Wow, wow. Please tell us about your experience in the under 20 World Cup. Like 
when you first heard your name, how excited were you to represent your, your country? Um, so representing your country is always an honor. You know? It's a big dream as a player when you have that opportunity or when you mm. it gives you a sense of knowing that you you literally change not just for your family, but a lot of people. So for me, I played on the seventeen first time. Uh, mm. the first ever U seventeen in New Zealand. I was part of the qualification with my sister. So <laughs> And I knew that I was going to make the team. The minute I didn't see it, I was just broke down in tears. It was the hard for me. I was like, you know, but I, it never stopped me and I kept going. So the following two years, I made it to the under 17. Then I went to Trinidad and Tobago World Cup. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. First time looking at over a thousand people in the stands watching me, you know. <laughs> And it was scary, but also it was good moments that you would never because you were able to play in front of these huge people. Even if not everybody going to be happy, at least one smile, you do something great. And then it was just incredible. Then from there, I was promoted to YouTube. My first World Cup was in well, because I've already had that experience of not being scared. It was transition because I know that that's a different level, you know, commitment it has to be different. I was ready. And then I just played under 20. We had a tough year. To, um, we lost against any in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I think that's the thing that we lost to. And then last World Cup was in Canada, 2014. Okay. And we actually won two, and then we lost one. So we tied with Canada and Korea. But then Canada has to go through with one one more difference. So then we came home. That's what happened. That was, or was that what I guess it was another heartbreaking for you ladies out there? It was because we, we were like, we're going to qualify. You know what I mean? And we actually needed to win to qualify. And so I actually scored the last goal. And then we were like, yeah, we win. Then we had that Canada scored last minute goal. And then we were on the field, like, oh no, you know. <laughs> so I had to pack the bags and come back to the States. That's it. Wow. That's, wow. That, oh, it was a great experience. Um, that's, you know, that's something that I'm always going to be in part of the national. But uh, yeah, those two things that need to change. But yeah, I enjoy my experience with the national team. Nice, nice. Please uh, tell us the difference between the ladies' football in Ghana and in America now. Like, what do you think ladies' football in Ghana can be done for it to, to get to the level of the ladies' football in America? Well, that's a huge difference, but for that to happen, it take is it's gonna take time. Nice, nice, nice. So yeah, um, just like I asked, was like, how do you think the football in Ghana can be changed for it to get to the level of the ladies' football in America? Um, first of all, like I said, um, time needs to happen. Like we need more time. Also, there has to be people. We they need to hire people that actually care about not just the game like making it different because even if you look at the women's and the like it, it's huge. so also the the foundation you know what i mean the youth programs those are main you know foundation that every club will need to be able to produce players and you know and that will help their leg be developed and to be seen because you don't have youth, youth programs. All they have now is one big, every club has one big team. It's just like mm -hmm. any team. So I don't know how they do recruit. So it's like, when you're 15 years old, you're joining that team. You're either going to sit on the bench for like a long time. Yeah, but by the time, you wasted so many times. So if the, the FA and, you know, the football association 
can try to implement, you know, some huge, huge programs to help the development and also for them to be able to invest so much money in uh, women's soccer. Because the investment in Ghana is really poor. So many women's teams, they don't get paid. And the they do get, it's less. It's, it's less. You don't call that as a profession. And I know this FA is trying to change this so many times that it didn't work. But like I said, it's going to take time for that to reach to where the U.S. is. I'm not saying because I'm here, that's why I'm trying to defend. Because I've been in Ghana and I'm here and I've seen every step, even compare the, the WPS or here with Pro League, compare it to Ghana Women's League. It's still, there's a huge difference. You know, also, equipment for club teams is bad. They need, like, all club teams should be able to provide for players, but also equipment for them to play pro, like a fitness trainer, have a psychologist and all of that. Those teams, we don't have it. We don't I have coaches, money, all that. To build a team, it, the players and the staff, it comes down to all these people that are making the team great. You know what I mean? So there, there's so much that needs to be done to, for us to be able to get to the top. But I know that we have so much talent. There's so much talent in Ghana. But the question is, for you to get those talents out, we need the tools, the equipment, the investment to bring all these players up. So I'm hoping that in the near future, the next few years, the the new FA will do something and make sure that change happens because the change happen. These young players, some of them, they are like that. They all they have is the soccer, but the mm -hmm. amount that they're getting, it's not near nothing at all. Wow. I hope that th that answer what I said, but uh, I believe that change will ha happen now there's a lot of things that's going on and i hope that they will see it and then they know that they will step up and make football in ghana if not we're still going to be the same honestly i think um the women football in ghana needs a whole lot of attention mm -hmm. just like you said because um when you look at the national teams the under 17 the under 20s the black queens like they always qualify to a major tournament, you know. They always go to the World Cup. They always go to the African Cup of Nations. So I think, um, just like you said, the FA in Ghana, they have to, like, give much attention to women's football and then help the young girls that want to play football, that want to, like, take it as a full-time job. Yeah, you know, is if you look out there, there's a whole lot of talent, just like you yeah. said. The structure and the preparation is is it's, it's not good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just like we're talking about um, women football being a full time job, right? Mm -hmm. If you go to UK, if you go to France, America, Spain, like Germany, you know, Switzerland, all these countries, it's a full-time job. You understand what I mean? Yeah. What, what is your view on equal pay for men and women in football? Yeah, with that, and if, you, if you've actually seen what the U, uh, U.S. women are, you know, what you call it and all of that that's a really strong thing for every woman on you know in the world for me that's biggest thing that it should happen women needs to be paid the same as men because we all do the same exact same job it doesn't matter what it is who does it more who, who do it less it's professional we all do working at the same amount of time amount of hours putting extra work together and it it's not just like just any any other job, it all requires sacrifice, and we all giving that same sacrifices. So why should we get the same amount of money? You know what I mean, or amount of income? You know, so it would great women same amount that the men do because they deserve it. You know what I mean? So I'm hoping that that will happen in the near future. 
Yeah, it's a full-time job. It's a full-time job. And just like you said, it's the same sacrifice, the same traveling, the same training, like, you know, so I think uh, you never know change in future mm -hmm. for women in football. So what is the love like? Like, yeah, are you struggling? Is there any man in your life? Is your DM dry? <laughs> can't, can't help you out here, you know? No, I'm good. Uh, I, no, I think with that department, it's more private, you know, that... <laughs> Um, I I will say I'm good over there. Yeah. <laughs> is it is it is it only football? Is that what you're trying to tell me? What What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, like, are you just focusing on football, like, or you are actually struggling to find somebody, or your DM is dry, or like, you get me? I don't think um I'm struggling to find someone. You know what I mean? It's just a matter of time when and when is the right time. I think as of right now, uh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> nice, 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 nice. You mentioned your sister. Like, yeah. tell us who your sister is. What has her impact been into your life? Like, yeah. So my sister, Elizabeth Kujo, mm -hmm. she's a former Black Queens player for Ghana. Um, no matter how much we fight, you know, and everything, she mm -hmm. had a huge opportunity to her because she, she made me fall in love with the game. Who I am now is also because of her too, because growing up, I will always see her waking up when she was in high school she would wake up and do her own training. She was like one of the best players, like commitment players. She would wake up, go to training. Sometimes she wake me up and pray, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. then she like that. And she showed me what the game means. Like when I was younger, like she meant, if you want this, you have to do so much to make it. You know what I mean? She won uh, African World Best Play before. She, she oh, okay. Play. She's one of the best players, you know. I literally thought that she's going to become one of the best. And then all things started to go wrong with the team. And money-wise, that I think it it really changed. And she just stepped away. Because she felt like there's some part of her life that will make her feel happy. So it was sad for me, too. But also, I'm like, uh oh. Now I can step in and do what he didn't do because when you're younger, we always you think that the best. So um, no matter what you do, you can pass it. And I think that that makes me always want to love to you. And after she was out, yeah, um, I've grown up and I've seen so many people that like me. I've had models and so pretty much she what the reason why I started the game. Anyways, yeah. Interesting. I'm sure she will be proud of you um, looking up to her, doing what you've always loved to do, mm -hmm. becoming the professional player you are now. So I'm definitely sure she's going to be proud of you or she is proud of you. <laughs> yeah. uh, who is your uh, role model? Who inspires you? So, like I said, I have few players that for the last 10, 15 years, looked up to you growing up. Because growing up, I didn't, like I said, there was no players that, you know, I could see and be like, oh, yeah. But I actually want it, someone is insp inspiring to me. It's different areas of my life. So the few players that I will tell you today, um, Carl Lloyd has inspired me on different levels. I don't know if players know Carl Lloyd. I had one of my teammates, with my favorite player, uh, Marco Zaboni. She's still my, she's now my teammate now. Oh, okay. I, I love Mata too. And then Alex Morgan, when I was in college, they all inspire me on different level. I got to make it long, I could have explained why each one inspired me in my life, different one. But then growing up, my role model was Rick Kaka from Brazil. Okay. <laughs> is that why your middle name is Kaka? Yes. Okay. 
Yeah, so growing up, you know in Ghana, when you play a game, you have to have a name based on the way you play and a player yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you have it. So I've always loved him. I see myself in him the way he plays. And every time I see him, there is just different feeling about this player that and he like he gives me when I'm watching him play. So he's actually my role model since I was eight. And that name. So in Ghana, pretty much people call me in Kaka because they wanted to have my first name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I got Kaka. So <laughs> those are yeah. the people that um they inspire me. Now there's now there's still a lot of players, even my own teammates, they inspire me, push me every day. But those four players have helped me so much going through this process of becoming players. There were moments where um. I'm I'm down. A moment where I down. A moment where I, I thought that it's not gonna work out for me. Then I'll go back and read interviews of hearing their story and why this game, what they did, and who they are now. And then it gives me, you know, strength to be like wake up and keep doing it because the people that you look up to, they made it happen. So mm -hmm. do everything. So yeah. Wow. Please, uh, can you tell us what team do you play, like the name of your team? Because I see few people asking. So the name of my team is Sky Blue FC. Okay. It plays in New Jersey, played in NWSL, National Women's Soccer League. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Um, you've mentioned your, your role models. <laughs> yeah. Like even... You've mentioned few of your teammates, like they've held you down, they've, you know, had your back during tough time and that, uh, you know. As a Ghanaian footballer, right? Mm -hmm. If you had the chance to change something in girls' football in Africa, what would it be? Um, biggest thing is for them adding education to to soccer because I will testify growing up a lot of people will say oh if you go to school that means you have to stop playing soccer because that's how it is because you have to spend time in reading books they, they never thought that you could do both mm -hmm. and I think most of them step away and they forget that education isn't just about going to school and study it's about life lesson you literally learn how to live life you know and also have a career somewhere else we all have so many des destiny or even passion it's not just one i i love soccer but there's other passion that coming to school and being mature and all of that to lead me into that so most of the youth players in ghana not even most players lack ability to be able to take in to so some of them they don't they choose to either play soccer but now a lot of them are trying to combine school and education and I know that it will help them in the future run because for me it, it worked for me now I'm able to go through that professional team that I've always wanted that I've always want to play and it might not be him, but also it give you something that you might not have if you didn't go to school so that for me that's the biggest thing if even if they have academy definitely you're going to go to school so education mm -hmm. should be added to soccer especially in Ghana that's the one of the things that I would want to change and it will help them to realize that sometimes you need to stand up for it. If you're able to go to school, you're going to do a lot of things. You know, being able to defend yourself, things that I didn't know and I was still shy, not confident to stand up for myself and all of that. But uh, when you be on those being in those environments, it helps you to realize that the things that happened back then that I should have said no to. And now I, I'm, I, I can't say no to it. So education should be one of the things. Okay. Every, everyone do needs education. Like even in men's football, there's a whole lot of us that have to take education football. You know, mm -hmm. if you look at these top, top, top players, you know, this guy playing for Leicester, will fed in Dindi. You know, he's actually going to uni at the Leicester University. That's good. Yes. 
still playing football full time, playing one, in one of the best league in the world, probably the best league in the world. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's still adding up education. You know, there's a whole lot of you know few players in the top league that are taking their education very serious. So girls' football is actually and men as well. The boys, the youth boys, they they should because I know a few of them that. I think I don't know what the agent told them to be like focus on soccer. I think they need to wherever you are, like you need to be able to even if it's not full education, be able to get into, you know, learning more about things outside your soccer. Yeah, but I think now mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of young players yeah. that believe that education has to be taken serious. Yeah. You know, if you look at the system in America, right? Mm -hmm. You go through college to be drafted in the MLS, even in basketball, even in uh, American yeah. football, in every sport, right? Can you please tell us how do you think this system can be done in Africa? Is it possible or not? Uh, I think in, in Ghana or Africa, like in Ghana, I doubt it. I'm not saying it, like the way, like I said, there's no youth programs because all these players college, they've played in youth, 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 like they were younger and they started joining the youth club. So they were able to, after when they finished high school, they know that the next step is college. But in Ghana, there's no even youth club team. When you go to college, literally, if you pick a university players, half of the players are the club team, and half of them, they don't play soccer. They're just there to have fun. So I don't, I don't think it, it, will, it, it wouldn't be easy for to do the same you know, in, in Ghana. It would be hard, and it would be hard to get players. They will have to start all over again, investing in all these areas, you know, building youth soccer and have a lot of, like, actually leagues around to be able to get players. And there's no scholarship. <laughs> Don't give full scholarship in Ghana or some scholarship to cover players' school and all. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think it would take time. Wow, wow. Um, what should be done to change women football in the world. Do you, do, you, do you think women football attracts fans? Then you haven't been in a women's game before, yes. No, no, I have, but I'm asking you because obviously I do watch the World Cup, like I said, Africa Cup of Nations. Mm -hmm. You know, if during uh, women's World Cup, Everybody yeah. is on it. But I'm asking this based on the, you know, a little bit of argument, women oh. having the same salary compared to men. That's what I'm asking you. Do you think women football do attract fans for fans to actually, like, support it just like they support the men football? Oh, 100%. If definitely, like, I would tell you that the, the thing is players want to watch it and now like right now you can definitely tell like every young player every young girl wants to come out there and watch these incredible players that you've seen on TV mm -hmm. I, w I don't even know how to put it because a lot of people actually watch women especially women and because they're doing something that they, they haven't seen it, or they, maybe there are things that they've seen but when they get to turn TV and then you see this play, even though they might not know them, but being in the mix of every player, just incredible for them to always watch. People watch more than maybe 10, 15 years ago. People, are, and especially the fans, they're always looking forward to actually witnessing and seeing the players on the field and interacting with them. So I know for sure, yeah, they love to be out there and watch other players. Mm. Nice, nice, nice. And please tell us what is your goal in the next few years? Um, 
personally, um, uh, one of the my, my goals is to I wanted to win a championship with my teams. Any team that I play, that's one of the biggest things for me. Uh, also, being able to get better, improve every single day, like every every year, and I want to get better, and also hopefully become one in the, in the world. That's my goal. At, um, pretty much, those are yeah, my goals. Become yeah. <laughs> Maybe play in one of the top leagues in the world. Yeah, become one of the best. It's all involved that. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. nice. That's nice. Um, tell us what's your favorite food. Like, do you have any local favorite food? Yeah. Um, I actually love rice. I love rice. I love emuwo and then kai. I make fufu. I love that. I love gari so much. So all of them, I actually come. I love those food so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm taking you back to your club, right? Okay. If you have to mention three of your friends, yeah, for me to DM to be on this show, <laughs> who would they be? Because I'm sure a few of them are watching. And like I said, this show is for everyone. You understand what I mean? I actually want more female players on this show for them to come out and actually tell us about their story. And she could come from Ghana, from Celerium, from mm -hmm. different country, you know, so that we all, you know, help each other and know where to to improve her. So give me three names you think oh, God. I should get them on this show. I literally have a list of people that I want to hear. Well, I'm going to pick um, one. It will be my sister, Estelle Johnston. Okay. She's, she's African, uh, Cameroonian, American. Okay. With that. Um, also one of my friends, I think Mage, Mage Purse. Would be good to be on that. I would want her to be on it. Okay. Also, Paige Monaghan, one of my friends. She's she's born uh, American, and I would love to have those three. On. But also, I have few many people. I wish I can put everyone here. Right. <laughs> now. I would love to put three on here so they can share their story and also for my friends back in Ghana to get to see them because I know they they really. Yeah. Yep. 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 Nice, nice, nice. Hi, right, guys. We are talking to Jennifer Kujo from Ghana, who plays in America for Sky Blue mm -hmm. on Teletalk Show. Now, before we finish, right, who is your favorite American artist? Oh, hard. Wow. Can I pick a lot of people or just one? Yeah, you can pick a couple. Okay, let me pick a couple. I love Rihanna, Beyonce, I love Brown, Nicki Minaj, Cardi B. <laughs> There's a lot of people. You just you just listen to girls' music, no any male like I love I said Chris Brown. Okay, I, just Chris Brown. I love Justin Bieber too. Why do you fancy Chris Brown like that? He he write good music. Those are my my go to music. Okay, okay. So you like his music, not his his looks. No, it's okay. music and yeah, yeah. It, because have you, do you listen to women's music? I love rap, but not too much in rap. I don't. So those are my people. Yeah, American. Okay. Okay, okay. And who is your favorite artist in Ghana? Africa or just Ghana? <laughs> okay, let's put it Ghana, Africa. So I love Sarkodie, Shatawale. <laughs> That's 100. I love Stoneboy too. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I love Davido. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I forgot her name. So, P the P Square Twin Brothers too. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, I love Tiwa Savi. Mm -hmm. And one person. Um, 
Oh, Kofi Kinata, your brother. <laughs> Kofi Kinata, yeah, he's from your end, isn't it? He's my brother, yeah. That guy is so he wrote sense. His his songs are crazy. But yeah, those are my people. Okay, before we leave, please tell us your best, best memory in football and your saddest memory in football. Oh, uh, I've had so many memories, like good ones. Best one is being able to, uh, I think, uh, let me put it this way. I'm going to put it to send it. Like, one will be being able to make my dreams come true right now and also scoring my... My first goal in under the World Cup for Ghana. Yeah. Sad memory? Oh. Mm -hmm. Losing a lot of games. Okay. That's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, somebody just asked, who was your best friend in the Ghana national team? Ooh. I have, I don't know if I have, I have Ellen Coleman is pretty friend and Elizabeth. Those mm -hmm. are my, like my, my best friends. Yeah. I have close friends too, but those are my best friends. Yeah. Okay. Jennifer Kujo, thank you very much for coming on Tele Talk Show. We appreciate you. Thank you for your time. And guys, please kindly follow my Instagram page, Telechase and Tele Talk Show. And you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Tele Talk Show, because all the interviews will be posted on there. Mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer, before you leave, please, is there something you want to tell your fans, your family, your teammates? What's your advice to the up and coming ladies who wants to play football? First, I will say thank you for having uh, so giving me the opportunity to speak with you about all. Um, first, I will say I miss my mom, my brother, and my my family, my dad so much. My friends back in Ghana and back in everywhere, like Oklahoma, California, I miss you also. Still, and also. Uh, I think I miss my sister, yeah. <laughs> but uh, in all, I would say, um, out there, if you're young, you old, keep chasing your dreams, leave them, just just trust the process, you know what I mean? It takes a longer time. Um, don't get to a point where you feel so comfortable. Don't be comfortable with what you have. You always have to keep going. And uh, there's going to be so now. You don't even trust yourself, but you just have to take it a day to cry cry and get over it and just keep going make sure that you you believe in it as the people around you have the good people around you that see your interest and they're going to also be open to and then just take the road don't, don't be scared at all that's what i would say so thank okay. you okay before before you leave um joyce joy one just ask me who in the ghana Women League, would you like to be on Tele Talk Show? Please, uh, anyone, anyone you can uh, oh, I have suggest to me, you are very welcome, Joyce, to DM me the person and I would have her on the show. I would tag you in this place. I think I would want you to have Maliet Opoku mm -hmm. uh, from Azaka's Ladies. Okay. I want you to have Prisha Archery from Ampim Dalkan Ladies. I uh, also have Abigail Mensa from Berry Ladies. I'm going to tag you all. Uh, I'm going to give you five. And also, <laughs> also want you to have Deborah Free from Police Ladies. Mm. And I uh, want you to also have, um, oh God, oh God. Mary Isifu from Soccer Intellectuals. So, okay. that's, yep. you can, yeah, those are the yep. people. Please do that. Uh, tag me and then I uh, will get hold of them and then uh, we can um, find a day to be on this show for them to come and express themselves as well. So thank you very much. Have a good day and have a good night, everybody. Thank
Thanks. Thank you for having me. Bye.